What's up everybody, this is Mike and today's video will be a question and answer type of video about the new DJI Mavic Air. So I've been spending lots of time recently on various Facebook groups, forums, uh, replying to my YouTube comments, messages and tweets and I've been gathering some questions that hopefully you guys will find interesting. There are a lot of them are very repetitive, so I'm sure many people are interested in knowing the answers to those questions. So without any further ado, let's jump to the most frequently asked questions about the DJI Mavic Air. No, unlike the Mavic Pro, the Mavic Air does not have manual focus. The focus is fixed and it's always there. Uh, so everything is in focus all the time. That could be a deal breaker for some that want to use manual focus, but for me it's, it's a plus since there is one less thing to worry about since you have so many settings to play with. And in the end, if the shot that you have taken is not in focus, then uh, it's completely ruined. So for me, it's a plus that this drone does not have manual focus. The Mavic Air only has two different color profiles for shooting video and they are normal and cine-like D. Now normal is the mode that you might be using if you're not planning to use color grading afterwards in post and cine-like D gives you more dynamic range to play with in post and the footage is a bit more washed out uh, but if you color grade afterwards it's a lot better to use cine like D. I've been experimenting with both and I find myself always switching back to cine like D as I like to edit my footage and color grading is not my favorite thing to do but it, the footage looks much better after color grading cine like D footage than just using normal footage. The video transmission feed has a resolution of 720p 30 frames per second so that's what you are seeing on your phone. Um, for me it's very nice, very crispy and sharp. The lag is almost not there, it's about 200 milliseconds and it's hard to be noticed. So personally for me this resolution is just fine, I've never had any issues following what's going on on my screen. Unfortunately, we don't have waypoints on the DJI Mavic Air, uh, but it's very weird as initially when the drone was announced uh, in the specifications, we uh, could see that there were some waypoints in the intelligent flight modes, but then DJI silently removed that flight mode from the Mavic Air, so I'm not sure why they did that. Maybe to differentiate the Mavic Air from the Mavic Pro just a bit more, so there is something that you can hold on to if you are looking for waypoints, you have to go for the Mavic Pro. I'm not really sure, but we don't have waypoints. So I've been flying the Mavic Air for the past two weeks, I would say. Um, I'm trying to fly as much as possible, as much as the weather allows me to and I actually made a flight test recently which I'll link below and in the cards if you want to check it out. Generally there is about 18 to 18 minutes and a half uh, flight time which I'm able to get from the Mavic Air. It's a bit less than what DJI promises but as we normally get lower flight time anyway, it's okay I think. Unfortunately, you cannot charge the drone with the USB-C port that is on the back of the drone. It's only for transferring your photos and videos to your computer. I was really hoping that we can get this feature and charge my drone straight from my MacBook, but unfortunately, it's not possible. Now that I've flown both the Mavic Air and the Spark, I can definitely see there is some uh, quite a, a large difference between uh, the Wi-Fi transmission technology in the Spark and the Mavic Air. Of course, the Mavic Air has a lot better technology. Um, it has improved quite a lot since the Spark and there were some problems with the Spark sometimes when uh, going into uh, Wi-Fi dense areas and now um, for some reason I don't have those issues anymore so definitely the Wi-Fi transmission technology is much better now. I really can't say which one is the best as I haven't used them all, but I can say which one I've been using and it's working just 
perfectly so far for me. I've been using the SanDisk Extreme Pro V30, 32 gigabytes SD card. It's a great card, it writes very quickly, it exports very quickly as well. The only problem with this card is that it's not enough for me. I'm definitely planning to upgrade to something bigger, maybe 128 gigabytes, as currently 32 gigabytes is definitely not enough for me. But this card is definitely very quick and I can highly recommend it. This is actually one of the most frequently asked questions on forums and different sites. People want to know whether they should buy the Mavic Air or the Mavic Pro. And although you can't really give a one-way answer, because people will use those drone, drones very differently, uh, I have to say in 90% of the time you will be perfectly happy with the Mavic Air. Let's just not forget how tiny this drone is as this is one of the biggest advantages of this drone. Personally for me it's, it's a blessing to, to be able to put this thing into the bag and forget about it. It's so tiny. Um, the obstacle avoidance in all directions is perfect as well. It works very well. Uh, 100 megabits per second, let's just not underestimate that. So basically, all of those things make me say Mavic Air. The drone actually performs very, very well in strong winds, surprisingly even because it's so tiny and small. Uh, and I was not planning to test this feature, to be honest, but uh, here in my area, we have very strong winds recently and I had uh, the choice between not flying or flying in strong winds and I decided to give it a go even though it's, it was one of my first flights I made a video about this you can go ahead and watch it after this one is over but um, I was surprised with the results the, the wind gusts were very strong about 80 kilometers per hour and the drone was uh, flying like it normally does and it was just perfect in this uh, very bad weather condition so um, I would say the drone performs much better than I expected uh, originally so I'm very happy with how it copes with the wind quite frankly I think ND filters are a must-have accessory for your DJI Mavic Air they can reduce the shutter speed and allow you to create a lot more smoother uh, better looking cinematic footage from your Mavic Air so uh, I honestly think they're a good investment the ones from Polar Pro have an excellent reputation. I am currently waiting for mine to arrive. They are stuck in customs, unfortunately, but they should be coming in a couple of days, hopefully, and I will create a video about them, of course. But um, until then, I think it's a good idea to head over to Polar Pro's website and check them out. I will link them in the description if you want to see them. I think those are enough questions for today. Those were definitely the most frequently asked questions about the Mavic Air, except for those generic ones that you can find the answer on the DJI website. But if you have any other questions that you uh, don't know the answer to, feel free to uh, ask me in the comment section below and I'll be sure to respond as soon as possible. That being said, thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you liked this video. Please give me a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe if you aren't already because I'm planning to create a lot more videos with the DJI Mavic Air and I'll catch you guys very very soon in my next one.